everyone. Thanks uh, for being here. Um, yes, my name is Dang Song. I'm a professor uh, in computer science at UC Berkeley and also the founder at Oasis Labs. Uh, so today the topic is uh, from academia to Web3 uh, because of my unique uh, experience and, and path. So, so first, just a little bit about myself. Uh, so the reason I'm invited to give this talk is because I'm one of the very few who actually strands uh, across between academia and industry. So I have been a researcher in security and privacy, blockchain, and also do uh, work in AI machine learning for, for a very long time. I have been a professor for over two, uh, I guess now maybe uh, right, close to two decades. And, um, uh, and also I am a serial entrepreneur. I have founded uh, three companies so far. And the latest one is Oasis Labs. So, um, what I want to share here is um, essentially how we can actually do this well, um, essentially bridging between academia and industry. And uh, I think that the secret sauce here is to build a flywheel for innovation. And in particular, uh, there are uh, these three uh, uh, pillars, three aspects, research, education, community, and entrepreneurship. And uh, in my work, uh, and also from my unique path and experience, I really combine all three and build a flywheel to enable real innovation and its impact in the real world. So in terms of education, here is just one example. Uh, uh, back in 2018, at Berkeley, we actually launched the world's first interdisciplinary course in blockchain that actually across three different schools at Berkeley including engineering school, business school, and, uh, and the law school. And uh, right, so New York Times actually wrote an article at the time about uh, this innovative education in blockchain. And uh, what I want to share here is uh, uh, also from the uh, research innovation, we develop a lot of new, techno uh, new uh, uh, technologies and how we take these research insights and innovation and bring it into real industry. Uh, so this is what, uh, so here I'll use Oasis Labs and what we have developed as an example. So Oasis Labs really started from my research group. Um, I use Berkeley taking uh, based on technologies that have been developed in my research group for, uh, for a long time. And, um, and here I wanted to share uh, briefly, a few key innovations uh, that uh, Oasis has developed. Uh, again, as an example of taking research innovation into the real world. So first, uh, so here I'll share a few key innovations uh, for Oasis uh, that makes Oasis unique um, and, uh, and also a leader in, uh, in the industry. So, so number one, uh, for scaling, Oasis actually is the first to uh, propose and develop um, modular architecture separating execution from consensus. So many of you here may have heard about this is essentially the key uh, feature of uh, ETH2 uh, architecture is to build a modular architecture separating execution from consensus. And a lot of people in the industry now actually are talking about this. Um, uh, proposing this as, uh, as a great way for scalability. Um, but Oasis actually, back in 2018, was the first to uh, propose and build uh, this uh, a new modular architecture for scalability for blockchain, separating execution from consensus. So with the Oasis uh, architecture, we have separate uh, compute layer, uh, consensus layer and compute layer, and at the compute layer, we have what we call different paradigms, stands for parallel runtime that enables different uh, isolated computing environments to run uh, concurrently in parallel and provide further scalability. And also in our case, uh, each paradigm essentially is what's called an enshrined rollup uh, on the consensus layer in today's technology. And also in addition, these different uh, paradigms also enable uh, this type of architecture to really support very diverse workload and provides novel capabilities that other architectures can now provide. So that leads to the, uh, the second key innovation for Oasis. Uh, we, uh, Oasis has developed 
the first and only confidential EVM. And so, uh, and that's provided by what we call sci-fi, which is a new paradigm that runs, secure uh, runs EVM in secure enclaves. And secure enclaves, essentially, these are secure hardware that actually can help protect the computation, uh, uh, the, this isolated execution environment, uh, and protect it from uh, the attackers from outside stealing information and modifying execution and so on. So, right, so Sapphire is the first and only confidential EVM and provides a number of uh, advantages. It's, uh, so first, given uh, also it's uh, with our scalable architecture, it um, uh, supports high throughput, low latency, and low cost. And also it provides strong privacy protection. The uh, smart contracts running in Sapphire, this confidential EVM, gets out of the box uh, confidentiality for its uh, con contract state. And uh, also this way, it provides out of the box MEV protection as well. Uh, because in this case, attackers actually won't be able to see the transaction details for users' transactions, and hence will not be able to front run um, the, uh, the users. And also uh, with Sapphire, it provides stronger uh, integrity security guarantees as well. So essentially, uh, in addition to traditional proof of stake protection, attackers in this case, in addition, has to break the secure enclaves in order to um, attack uh, the network uh, and, and also the, um, uh, the, 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 uh, the state integrity as well. It has provides much stronger uh, security and integrity guarantees. And also, Sapphire provides full EVM compatibility so that um, it's actually really easy for both developers and for users. For developers, developers can easily port existing Solidity smart contracts into Sapphire within less than 10 minutes, uh, usually. And uh, all existing uh, Ethereum tooling uh, works out of the box. And for users, essentially users have the same, uh, essentially have the same user experience uh, with all the same user-facing uh, toolings uh, and so on. And, um, and also Sapphire enables new built-in uh, functionalities as well uh, for additional, uh, to provide additional capabilities to dApps. So with all these great advantages, uh, Sapphire uh, is easy to use and also can leverage existing uh, eco, uh, Ethereum ecosystem. And, um, uh, and also, so essentially, there's no downside for Sapphire. Uh, there, there's no downside uh, to use Sapphire. There's only upside. Because anything that you can use today running, non running in non-confidential EVM, you can do it easily with uh, running in Sapphire. And on top of that, Sapphire offers all the great advantages that as I mentioned earlier. And hence, if you are running Solidity smart contracts, you, um, uh, if you are running application EVM, there's actually no reason for uh, developers or for users not to use Sapphire. So that's how good Sapphire is. And also, uh, one thing I want to mention is uh, for Sapphire, uh, so, so essentially, Sapphire is taking a first step in this inevitable evolution. Uh, if we look at internet, at the beginning of the internet, it's, uh, everything is actually in clear text for the internet traffic. Everything goes over HTTP. But however, today, most of the traffic goes through HTTPS uh, in this uh, encrypted channel. Because as uh, people start to use the internet, as we uh, get more ma uh, mass Adoption, people realize that privacy is really important. Um, and at block, uh, for blockchain, we are still early today. Uh, but however, we, um, as blockchain usage uh, gets uh, broader adoption, we are going to see the demand for privacy uh, increases, um, will, will increase dramatically. So for example, if you are doing payments, if you are purchasing something using um, uh, right, using cryptocurrency, or if you are paying, uh, you know, uh, employee salaries uh, using blockchain, you don't want this information to be out there in public. And hence, uh, I my prediction is that 
uh, in the um, right in the future as blockchain adoption uh, gets broader, the demand for privacy will be there, and also it's really really important. And hence, so far as um, it's a, again as the first and only confidential EVM actually provides a perfect solution uh, for the uh, in, in this case. And um, uh, and again, this uh, for blockchain, I think it will go through a similar inevitable evolution. And Sapphire is available on Testnet today, so people can actually go to the uh, Oasis uh, website to try it out. And so that's the, uh, I mentioned the second key innovation. The third key innovation for Oasis is uh, provides a new infrastructure for data sovereignty. And in particular, uh, in this case, we enable a new paradigm that we call policy compliant decentralized computation. And in particular, in this case, using OSIS technology, we combine blockchain and uh, privacy computing and cre to create a new type of asset we call data assets. And with data assetization, the OSIS platform can unlock a new responsible data economy where users and businesses can maintain data rights and earn value from their data assets. And we have uh, applied this in the uh, domain, as an example, in a genomic data use case, where we help users for the first time to maintain control of their genomic data and at the same time still enable their data to be utilized in a privacy-preserving way and gain benefits from that. And also, separately, uh, again, as another example of taking research uh, innovation and technology into uh, real-world practice, uh, recently, uh, Oasis Labs also announced a partnership with Meta, uh, where we develop uh, the uh, privacy technologies and enable uh, the first of kind large-scale AI model fairness measurements while pr protecting users' privacy. So, so far, these are examples that I have mentioned how we can take research innovation and bring it into the real world. So now I wanted to briefly mention a new center that we have been building at Berkeley, a campus-wide center on blockchain and Web3 called the Center for Responsible Decentralized Intelligence, RDI. And here's a mission for RDI, is to advance the science and technology of Web3 decentralization and decentralized intelligence to make it universally accessible and empowering a responsible digital economy. And you can learn more about RDI um, at its website, rdi.berkeley.edu. And RDI builds on a strong foundation uh, at Berkeley, um, Berkeley being the number one university overall in the US and also number one university for blockchain in the US uh, and so on. And uh, RDI builds on a strong foundation to uh, bring uh, the, uh, uh, this space uh, to the next level. And the reason it's called RDI is because uh, RDI focuses on three key aspects. The first is responsible. Uh, the center focuses on developing new technologies and approaches to ensure that decentralization technologies is used in a responsible manner. And second is decentralization. The center focuses on developing uh, both new decentralization technologies as well as helping explore the legal frameworks and also help analyze and understand societal impacts of the decentralized systems. And the third one is intelligence. Uh, the center helps innovate in technologies to build up autonomous agents and organizations operating with decentralized trust. And the, the center spans uh, over uh, multiple schools on campus with uh, a number of uh, faculties involved. And also the center has, as I mentioned, there's the, what's really important is the flywheel. And the center is exactly designed uh, with this, uh, to enable this flywheel. Uh, in particular, the center has these three key pillars research, education, community, and entrepreneurship. And with research, the center develops new technologies and also as interdisciplinary across multiple schools, as I mentioned, including computer science, finance, economics, and law school, and so on. And uh, the center spans uh, over broad-ranging research scopes uh, in blockchain and Web3. And in education, the center has been leading uh, new uh, cutting-edge classes and also interdisciplinary courses in blockchain uh, and Web3 and related areas. 
And in particular, the center has been leading a number of uh, new MOOCs in the space, including the DeFi MOOC. Uh, you can go to defi-link.org. And also the new MOOC on entrepreneurship in Web3. For each of these MOOCs, we have many thousands of students uh, from over 30 countries across the world uh, uh, participating in the class, and also hundreds of students from Berkeley campus as well. And, um, uh, and also the third pillar is community entrepreneurship. The center has been, uh, so Berkeley has a vibrant uh, uh, student organization and also ecosystem, including Blockchain Berkeley student organization and so on. And also the center uh, is, uh, has been uh, hosting and organizing various conferences and events. Uh, so for people who are interested, you can check out CESC.io for a new conference uh, that uh, the center is hosting at uh, Berkeley this fall. Um, it has over 170 paper submissions in Blockchain Web3, so making it the highest, uh, the conference with the highest number of paper submissions for Blockchain Web3. And also we're organizing a zero knowledge proof workshop as well at the uh, end of October that you are welcome to submit uh, your abstracts or just register uh, the conference. And finally, uh, the third pillar of the center, the RTI Center is Berkeley Blockchain Accelerator, which has incubated over 85 teams, with the following, which has raised follow-on funding for over $450 million. So all together with three key pillars, the center builds a flywheel to bring uh, innovation into the real world. And uh, this is the final uh, mission statement, again, for the RTI Center. So uh, please go to the website to learn more, and you can sign up on the mailing list uh, to stay tuned for, um, uh, right, uh, for, for further information as well. Thank you.